What's up guys, Doug Polk here and welcome back to another episode of Poker Hands. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of the biggest pots I played when I was on Poker Night in America a couple of weeks ago. But before we jump into that, I want to make a quick announcement. If you enjoyed the video with me and Pratush on how to play in the early stages of a tournament, we're going to be doing another video like that, this time with just Pratush, where he talks about how to play around the bubble. If you're interested in that video, you can check out the link in the description below. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the action. It's going to be a brutal day. <laughs> I have a personal pick today who I'm a real fan of. I, I really enjoy that, that, uh, Kyle Julius's game. I think he's a great okay, player. Yeah, straddle on board. Very good on the live felt. Right. That will be my personal pick for today. Don't worry, Cantu. He had a decent sesh. He blinked when he checked. No! Yeah, he, he, he's a very, very, very good tournament player. and He's been around for a long time. I got a, I got a question here from pa Paul Griffin before this uh, hand gets out of control. Okay, never mind. Uh, it is out of control. Yeah, we got a we got a. I like it. Raise him a three bet. It looks like after a straddle. Some early action. Ite picking up. So picking it's up some nice hands. You gonna try? You gonna try and do it <laughs> when you get Sean Deeb? Friendly three, four, and five bets. <laughs> the 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 three bet. Five way action to the flop. <laughs> I don't think Doug. What? Where are you no, I don't there think he's folding. Oh. They're playing. They're playing very deep stack. Let's take a look at the stack. <laughs> Actually, I can't see their stack. Oh, yeah. Our hand begins with David Baker straddling it up under the gun to hundred dollars. The action then folds to me in the small blind with Queen Ten suited. Now, when you're in the small blind and there's a straddle, it's definitely not a good situation. It's bad enough when it's just small blind, big blind, but now there's another blind out there, so there's two people you have to get through that have position on you not just post-flop, but also pre-flop. Also, what, another thing that hurts you here, your odds to play are worse. You have only a fourth of what effectively is the big blind in the pot. So in general, in this spot, you have to raise somewhat conservatively and then pick your spots wisely. I would certainly open here with most of my Broadway hands, some suited connectors, my suited aces, all of those kinds of hands for sure, as well as pretty much any pocket pair. So I raise up to 400 here with Queen 10 suited, and now Ite looks down at pocket jacks in the big blind. Here she has a very clear 3 bet, and in general there is an upside to 3 betting kind of aggressively here. You're going to knock the, the straddling player out of the pot, and they're going to have position on you post flop, so knocking them out is a pretty good result. If Ite calls here, the straddle is going to get a pretty good price on calling with whatever he has. So by re-raising, you knock them out. And I mean with Jax, it's a standard 3-bet, but I'm just talking about general strategy. Anyway, she goes ahead and makes it 1500 here with pocket Jax. The straddle folds and it's back over to me. Now, with Queen-10 suited, I'm not going anywhere. In general, when you have suited broadways and you get 3-bet, even if you're out of position, you're going to take a flop. Now, this could change if someone 3-bet's especially huge. And don't get me wrong, this is a large size 3-bet. But I still have a hand with a lot of playability, and it will balance out some of the other hands I want to call. In general, you should be a lot more liberal with calling suited hands over hands like low pairs out of position or offsuit broadways. Anyway, I decide to call, and let's take a flop. It just shows how much everyone's winning and losing. But let's take a look at their stacks. Doug's got a 10K stack there. So Doug's playing at 20,000. Does she have a, a, a lot? Yeah, she's got about at least 15, probably more, probably closer to 18. So they're they're, they're quite deep, and right. suited hands just don't get folded that much there. Right now, if you're Doug Polk, this is this is going to be tough to get away from, at least on the flop. What, what are you thinking? How much money is he going to end up putting in in this pot? Well, Doug is a GTO player, so he, he's, he's going to do the most GTO thing, which is going to be to... to... The flop comes 10-6-6, six, six, two spades and one club, so I flop top pair and the backdoor flush drop. This situation is generally not very good for the player that flatted pre, because I don't really have many sixes in my range pre-flop at all. You know, maybe a hand like 7-6 six suited or 6-5 six, suited, but those would also be a little bit on the lose side pre-flop. So my best hands here are generally speaking going to be a hand like uh, a 10 or maybe a hand like jacks or maybe a few hands like nines or eights. In general, I'm going to have a lot of high card hands here and maybe some draws. So I check it over to Ite who now decides to bet with pocket jacks. Now on a board like this, you're going to want to be betting with the majority of your hands. 
As the three better, if you want to trap someone, I don't mind mixing that in with a hand like maybe aces or when you flop top boat. Those can be some good trap hands. But in general, you're looking to bet this flop aggressively because you have a range advantage against your opponent. Over to me with top pair facing this bet, I have a very clear call. The question is going to be how many streets do I go? If you face a bet here, you're likely going to face a lot of barrels, but this is one of the better hands that I can even have. There's some chance she has a hand like ace 10 or king 10, but in general, the value range she's representing is jacks through aces, and my hand is okay against that, a little bit of removal, some backdoor equity, so definitely a hand I'm looking to play for two or maybe even three streets. So I call, and let's take a turn. Totally sure about, well, that'll oh, work That'll work too, but I'm not totally sure what, what, what GTO is for everything, but I can't, I can't imagine it be folding with top hair, good kicker, and a backdoor flush. Well, now everything changes. Yeah, he's probably going to lead out here. This is going to be very interesting to see if Ite has the fold in here. It's hard to, it's hard to give him any anything better than Jax, and it's also not easy to give him a 10. I don't know enough about Ite, but I would imagine if she has an overpair, it's just going to go check, check, so he's, so he's going to lead out. Yeah, I've played probably more with Ite than any other player. Okay. And like in poker, just because I've been playing with her since high school, and <laughs> she's a very live player. And but also that she's going to realize. I'm going to tell you what she's thinking. She's going to realize that Doug is a very GTO player, and is going to take that into consideration. That's I know that's specifically what's going on in her head. I think it's going to be very hard to fold, even to a river bet. Yeah, I don't. I think if she calls and the, the, the river card is, well, anything, really. The turn comes the 10 of hearts, which is rather favorable. I have improved to top boat here and move into the lead. Now, this is where the hand starts to get kind of interesting. In this spot, let's think about some of the hands I'd play on the flop. I could have 9-8 suited. I could have maybe some hands like King Jack of Spades, Queen Jack of Spades, 9-8 of Spades, Jack 9 of Spades, a lot of different flush draw hands. I can also float with any of the gut shots I might call pre, but it's also important to note that I'm not too likely to have a hand like 9-7 or 8-7 suited out of position, although with 9-8 suited, I might go ahead and take the flop. You could maybe make an argument for playing all of those hands given our stack depth, but those are hands you generally want to reserve for calling in position so you can overrealize post flop. A lot of these mid to weaker suited connector type hands tend to not do too well when you have to go first, and then when you do complete your hand, you don't get a chance to value it all the time. Anyway, this 10 is a very good card for my range, and while, yes, I don't have too many boats here, I can definitely create a range of hands that want to, that want to bet. Let's say I had some of those straight draws I listed that I want to, to call on the flop with, I would definitely call and look to play some turns and rivers, and I also am not going to be raising any hands on the flop. The reason is because I don't really have a 6 in my range. I really only can have, the only really strong hand I can have is 10s, and there, you know, I'm happy to trap and play some lighter streets. So when you can't really create much of a value range, it doesn't make sense to bluff much either. On this turn, I now have a bunch of hands that can lead for value. I could certainly have hands like 10-9 suited, maybe 10-8 suited, and then definitely jack-10 through ace-10 suited, as well as maybe ace-10. That might be a little bit too loose for me pre, and I'd probably lean more towards 4-betting or fold, but I can definitely have a bunch of 10s. I also could maybe occasionally have a 6, although those aren't very likely at all, and I would certainly like to lead some of those on the turn as well. An important note here is you can't always lead when you have a 10. If you do that, then your check range becomes too weak. So you want to mainly lead 10s on the turn, and then mainly lead your draws, but also keep a couple 10s in the check range and a couple draws so you can play the river if it goes check, check. Anyway, I lead 3,800 here with queen 10, and I'm looking to barrel some rivers. Now over to Ite with Jax, well, what should she do? And generally speaking, when you see bet the flop and you face a turn lead, on cards that are bad for you, you generally want to fold with all of your bluffs, maybe continue with a couple of the best possible draws to, to you know, to uh, be able to bluff on later streets, like 98 of spades or 87 of spades, which are definitely hands that she can have. But in general, you're going to want to continue with the hands that were value betting in the flop and now base a turn bet. 
you're gonna have to lay some over pairs down if this does go bet bet and we're gonna talk about which ones you should or shouldn't if i barrel the river so she calls and let's take a river call the river that might save a lot of money i don't i don't really think it changes that much because if doug was bluffing you know if he caught an ace there's a good chance he would check what do you think i i think if doug bets here she folds it's in in my opinion oh i th I, th I think she's still going to call because if she if if there is something that that makes her believe that he was bluffing he would still continue bluffing oh, this is the beauty of poker we'll get to see there's so many different ways and it, it, when i say betting it's got to be a sizable bet not just some kind of blocker bet hey, he's probably going to go all in what, what what's the pot 13,000 he's only got it looks like he has 7,000 left is that what they're saying i don't know if that's a 5k bundle or a uh, I think she folds. And I don't even know how much all that is. I don't think so. Ooh, I got 100 on the side. You can't bet you. <laughs> the river comes an offsuit ace, which is not one of my favorite river cards. Now I lose if she has ace, 10, or aces. And while those things aren't too likely, there's still something that we should note. Also, if she does have a hand like jacks, queens, or kings, this card might kill some of my action because now she might be worried that some of my hands hit an ace on the river and either will value bet or just simply cannot bluff. To be fair, if I had an ace here on the river, I would probably check and look to go for a check call, but it's not really a hand that I can bluff with anymore because it would be top pair. So now in order for me to bluff this river, I have to have a hand like essentially spades. There are some spades hands, king, queen of spades, queen, jack of spades, king, jack of spades, nine of spades, maybe jack, nine of spades. So there are a few hands that fit that bill, and then there are maybe a few straight draws I could have as well to round out my range. But in general, this card is not good for Ite, and she should now look to fold more hands like jacks through kings. I go ahead and fire 10.5 thousand here, which is a reasonable size bet given the situation. I don't mind the idea of jamming, but the problem with that is she can certainly have tens. When we look to use overbet jams, we want to do it in spots where our opponent can't really have a lot of the good hands. Well, here she absolutely could have a hand like queen 10 suited, king 10 suited, ace 10 suited, or maybe even some jack 10, 10, 9 suited if she decided to bet the flop with those. So we want to save over bets for spots where our opponent's capped, and that's not the case here. So I decided to bet 10.5 thousand, a healthy sized bet, and the action is over to Ite. Now the first thing you want to think about with your over pairs in this spot is, okay, I'm going to have some 10s, I, I'm going to have ace, ace, and those are going to be hands I can continue with. And you're all, she's also more likely to have a 6 than me. So she does have some hands that can continue here even if she folds jacks through kings. However, if she folds all of those hands, she's probably going to end up overfolding. Now, you might be able to argue it's okay to overfold here because the player in the small blind is going to have a lot more boats than you, so you're going to have to be okay letting some bluffs get through. But if you want to have a, a strategy that doesn't allow bluffs to profit, you're going to have to call with some jacks, queens, and kings. The question becomes, which one of those hands should I call? Which one should I fold? Now, in general, you're going to want to let go of hands that are jacks or kings when you have a spade. If you have a spade here on call, it is a terrible hand to call with. The reason is because you want me to have the jack of spades in my hand so I can have those hands we talked about earlier, like king jack of spades or queen jack of spades or jack nine of spades. So any over pair with a spade, I would probably throw out. After that... It gets a little bit less clear on what the best ones are. Maybe you don't want to have a hand with a club in it, considering there's some chance I could float like King Jack of Clubs on the flop, which would be a bit loose, but certainly possible. So maybe you don't want to have a spade. Maybe you don't want to have a club. And that leaves jacks without either of them as probably one of your best hands to call with. It's also worth saying that you wouldn't want to have a hand, uh, wouldn't want to have a nine in your hand or an eight because you want me to have some of those straight draws. So... Of the over pairs, Jax is probably one of the most reasonable ones with these suits. The question is, do you really have to call with these hands? Also, it's certainly possible she could have a couple hands like Ace-King or Ace-Queen, bet the flop, float the turn, and river top pair. She could also have a few nut flush draw hands and took the same line. So frankly, I think you can probably lay Jax down. It is one of the better pairs to call with, but can she get away from my full house? Ite is a very good friend of mine, so I I do hope she does fold, but but of course I'm neutral because I'm announcing. I think Doug has enough money. She knows the fold, by the way. 
Do you believe me? She knows the what? She knows she's supposed to fold. Do you believe me? I, I, I do believe you. She said call. No, you're right. He turned over cards, though. She, he's, probably, he's probably getting paid. Can I give you cash? Yeah, fine. Thanks for joining me here today for this video. And if you are interested in learning more from Patrice Padiga, make sure to check out that link in the description below.